So I was, I have to say, I love this show. I watched it last night. Um, and I was so happy to see this was written and produced by brilliant women whose individual work has just like such a biting sense of humor. And mm -hmm. It just really just shined through the whole show. Yeah. So glad you said that. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's a really smart comedy uh, for our times and it feels relevant and it doesn't talk down to the audience at all. Um, so I was wondering, you know, what were your reactions to the script? Sort of exactly what you just said, actually. I, I, I was so drawn to the women involved. Um, I've, I've, always, I've really wanted to work with Leslie Headland, really wanted to work with Jenny Connor. I loved Simone's script. Um, uh, I also felt it wasn't patronizing and talking down to its audience. I think that uh, characters in their late 20s, early 30s, it, 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 sometimes they're sort of, um, you know, talked down to in a way and um, and I and or oversimplified or stereotyped and I think Sam is is not those things and um, she's complicated she's funny she's uh, messy um, she's earnest which I think is also sort of rare on TV nowadays I think there's a lot of snark which I'm all all for uh, as a snarky person myself um, but I do think sometimes it's nice um, it's nice when characters are sincere and, and really trying to get better, which I think a lot of the characters on this show are. Yeah. Um, so I was drawn to all of those, those things. And Allie, how about you? Um, right away. Um, these are this, this, these women are the, these are the people I've always wanted to work with too. The same thing as Sophia, um, Jenny and Leslie and Simone and then Daisy came on later and just, this is it. Um, and then the writing is so smart and rich and delicious. Um, so when I read the script, which was just the first episode, right? The pilot is all we read. Um, I, Carol clicked for me right away. And this relationship between the mom, mom and daughter did. And there's something about the way Simone and Jenny write. I, it's hard to, you know what I'm talking about, Sophia? There's just a thing about the way they write that feels very, really effortless to me. And I know it comes off. Sophia flows really well with it too. It just, it, it just jives right, you know? Yeah, I think sometimes certain writers just sort of fit you, fit you as a person, yeah. as a performer. And it, it, yeah. it, you don't have to, you still have to do the work and, and, and put, your, put your hours in, but it, it also just sort of feels more effortless than it can with other writers. Right. Right. And I think that says a lot to the tone, you know, when you're talking about serious topics like cyclical trauma and alcoholism, there's like a fine line you have to walk with comedy. Um, but there's humor and pain. Um, so yeah. I was wondering, like, as actors, how was it to create that tone, to capture that tone? That was really beautifully said. I, I really uh, agree. It's one of the things I love most about the show. Um, there is so much humor in pain. <laughs> There's so much humor in, in the, the just sort of like, you know, one step forward, two steps back that we all experience in life. Um, and the tone to me was like the greatest challenge of the series. It, it, it was really exciting when I felt like we hit it. Uh, it was really scary when I wasn't sure if we did. You know, it like you said, it's a fine line and we were, we were always wanting to be respectful of this story, especially because it's Simone's actual life experience. Mm. Um, we also wanted it to be funny and, and, and universal and real, all of those things, you know, it, you can kind of get overwhelmed by it. I think the, the gift of working with people like Ali is that you just sort of leave that outside and just try to stay present and be in the moment and be honest and then hope that that will in turn, you know, do the thing you need it to do. But it is, it is hard, I think, um, to find that, that sort of middle ground. And in terms of just genre, for me, it's like a coming of age genre. And of course that genre alone has really took apart an evolution. Um, Ali, you were part of some of my favorite coming of age films. Um, and now, you know, we see this really unique story that, you know, wouldn't have told these stories about women even five years ago. So I, w I was wondering what y'all thought of that. Um, I, yeah, 
I, I feel like there are more uh, stories, I guess. I've been, listen, because of the pandemic, I suddenly have those, the streaming. I never had streaming anything before, right? But because of this, I'm, like a binge, I'm binge watching things. And yeah, there are a lot of stories written by women, for women, great female characters in them. Um, I think it, I think it's, uh, I think it's fresh. I think it feels finally, finally, do you know what I mean? I could, I can find something to watch or hear with reading the script where I can actually see myself there, do you mm. know? This character makes sense to me. This relationship makes sense to me. This speaks to me. I resonate with this. That's how this whole show was, but I also think that there's the the kinds of things that are being created for television. Um, I, I, just personally, for me, th there are a lot more shows that I that resonate for me. So now I love all the streaming apps. I have them all. I think you're so right, Nikki. I think that even you know, even five years ago, TV was a very different landscape in terms of coming of age stories and. And also, you know, like anti-hero stories and sci-fi stories. I, I recently fell in love with Yellow Jackets, as I know a lot of people did. And I just was I, I enthralled by it and was like, this, it feels like it was made for me. You know, this, this incredible cast of women where every single female character is, is sort of fucked up in a way. And, and I was thinking about how Lost and all of these shows that came before it, the lead was always a man. Um, and how he navigated this experience, which is also awesome. I love Lost. Um, but I think we are moved because there's so much content and there's so much space for, for creators to sort of tell the stories they want to tell. There's just so much more representation in television. There's so much more opportunity for these specific nuanced female stories. And um, it's just fun as a fan of TV. It's just really fun to be a part of it. And I'm sure all of that plays into the mother and, and daughter diam dynamic that you guys have expertly crafted and created with the writers. So I was wondering if you guys could talk about that because they're brutally honest with each other while like concealing a lot of their trauma too. So that's a like, very interesting thing to play with. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> yes. <I> mean, <laughs> glad you put brutally in there. Um, yes, brutally mm -hmm. honest. Um, yeah. They both, they're, they've both been through a lot of, there's a, there's a, the funny thing about working with Sophia and Carol and Sam for this is that there's a, there's a fragility to their relationship, but at the same time, all it is is like slamming against each other. So it's just sort of like these two different qualities happening. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's red on one hand and then on the other hand, like nothing could ever tear them apart. It, yeah. it is, it's so truthful to mother daughter a mother daughter dynamic to me yeah. and I it's my favorite thing about the show it's the thing that pulled me in the most right from the jump it's like those those kinds of th that kind of relationship is not often told in this I think kind of messy of a way yeah it's not just one thing they're not they're not enemies they're not best friends you know they're not easy on each other <laughs> mm -mm. yeah and what are you both hoping for your characters um, to come? I just want more with Allie. <laughs> more I really do. I'm, I'm so yeah. like dream for season two. If we get, hopefully get one knock on wood. Like I want to do like a bottle episode. That's just me and Allie in family therapy for the entire episode. Uh, I love working with her so much and I love that relationship so much. I just am, uh, I really hope that we get to explore that more and, and, yeah. and just sort of skim the surface of their, their sort of shared trauma and grief um, yeah. that Simone really experienced in her life and her mother and, and her really experienced. So I'm, I'm very interested in getting more into that, that um, history as well. Yes. Yes, I think there's a lot, I think <laughs> there's a lot more to navigate and negotiate between these two, right, Sophia? Yes. And there are things that, you know, for this first year or whatever it is, you're home and the sober and the whole thing. Okay, so it's, it's this particular period of time, we're dealing with each other in a particular way. But then as time goes on, you know, I'll give her some credit. And I'll give Sam some credit and maybe feel like there are conversations I could have with Sam, even though I don't, I, Carol's a lot of drama, but I think she doesn't want to 
she doesn't want want anything to be saccharine or maudlin or you know too neat or tied up like the, these aren't they they have they have a very messy relationship and it's complicated so i just think there's so much more in there well thank you so much i really enjoyed talking to the both of you about this show i just again i think it's brilliant i think the two of you are brilliant together and i will never look at miley cyrus's the climb ever the same way ever <laughs> Thank you so much, Nikki. Really appreciate it. Thank you.